Hi, good afternoon everyone. Uh, I'm very privileged, very honoured to be invited by uh, AKA, by me, uh, as a partner to be in Vietnam to share with you what Capri does as a company. So thanks for still being uh, you know, energetic after the lunch. Uh, today I would like to talk, uh, first part of the session will mainly focus on um, the BCG report. And then the second part is what we have done for some of the brands uh, from a conglomerate, uh, from a B2B and B2C. So we want to you know, bring a little bit more life uh, to the audience of what we do as a company. I, want, I, I don't want to talk too much about capillary, but what I basically want to introduce is we started as a company in 2008. Um, today we are live with more than 500 brands in our portfolio. Uh, and we power more than 100 loyalty programs today in the world. So, a very quick, uh, you know, about myself. So you can scan, uh, that's my LinkedIn profile. So I've been in the retail industry. It happened by accident that I, you know, walked into this industry 20 years back. Uh, and then this industry has always been very interesting, um, both from, you know, the retail, FMB, and the hospitality for me. So um, I started off working on point of sale system, doing a lot of IT related stuff, and later on, you know, started to convert into um, the marketing technology and body space uh, in Capillary. So I've been with Capillary for more than ten years now. Um, so I'll go to the next one. So the first part is a PCG report that we are focusing on. The PCG report wanted to um, kind of highlight there are four key challenges that companies today face with. So some of these challenges are also being highlighted by you know, some of our partners who actually spoke earlier. I think the first point is very important is three quarters of brands today, when they do not exist, nobody really noticed them if they do not exist tomorrow. The second thing is due to a lot of, um, you know, a lot of noise, a lot of uh, you know, TikTok or whatever program that's happening, message information being constantly bombarding you. So average lifespan of a consumer will not be more than eight seconds. The third one is we all know that we need to engage our customers or company needs to engage the uh, customers more proactively and more efficiently. 70% um, of customers chose a competitor with an easy process and option. So, and lastly, if you are spending your customers, not sending relevant information, not providing the customers with the right information on the offer, uh, most of them will kind of unsubscribe and they will unsubscribe from you totally. So you do not even have a chance to talk to your consumer. So these are the four key um, challenges brought up by BCG uh, when they are doing this research. Now, let's next take a look at some of the um, market research data that we have with 100 companies across the region. So what I wanted to focus on in this report is, um, you will see 55% of them are focused on Southeast Asia, 90% is on uh, rest of APEC. So in Southeast Asia, we have a few countries, like for example, we have Vietnam, definitely one of them, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore. So there's a mix of uh, countries in the SEA region, uh, there's 90% in APEC, which consists of Japan, China, New Zealand, Australia, and the rest is the North America. What is also important to note is the kind of verticals, the industries that we are talking to. We talk to the retail companies, CPG, uh, banking and finance, travel and leisure, and telcos. So why we wanted to show this is also, it leads to the next discussion point later on. The firm size that we talk to in terms of sampling audience is uh, companies with revenue more than 100 million to 5 billion dollars. The vaccination uh, would probably be most of the uh, guests today, like the CMO, the CIO, or the minus one of the CMO and CEOs. Lastly, what are the uh, key important decision areas that they're going to focus on uh, in a program? Now, we uh, most of the findings is 75% of companies acknowledge that data is the most important level to drive growth and efficiency. So there are two things when we start looking at the data. First one is we want to drive growth, which 85% of them says that they want to improve 
typically the top line. And when you say 74% drive efficiency, it's mainly they want to improve the bottom line. So at the end of the day, when you have a drive growth and efficiency, it leads to a better profit. Now, when we look at loyalty, loyalty as a system, on this particular side of the graph, then we have the Nelson Emerging Progressive and Pioneer. So Nelson means that people are just at the very beginning of a loyalty program. So when we run a loyalty program, uh, if they are at the beginning, you we'll probably look at the percentage of the top line, which is, means that they could probably increase 2 to 7% of the top line, and as much as between 21 and 30% if they are in a very advanced stage of a loyalty program. Now, 95% of companies have kick started data uh, driven customers' marketing journey. However, only 50% is in the emerging categories, which means that a lot of people are still, a lot of companies are still in the very early stage of uh, running a loyalty program, which means there's a lot of opportunities that we can do for this sector. Now, in this particular area, uh, we all know that there are five main industries that we started off uh, in the earlier slides. So we can see in the retail industry, some of these players are already very well advanced in the game. You know, they have a very excellent uh, customer's user interface, they are engaged on social media, uh, they have all the only channel and the touch points. So that's why in the green area, it kind of highlights that it's in the progressive stage. We also see a very common trend in the CPG industries, like brands like Unilever, um, you know, the PNG of the world. So these are companies who is also going down to engage the consumer. So in the typical uh, traditional practice, they are always selling through distribution channels. So they always have access to resellers, but they never have end consumer data. So we started to work with uh, some of these uh, CPG brands to actually go down to the market to capture the consumer data and make it more interesting for the consumer. So that is also the trend that is coming up from uh, the CPG industry. One thing I think that is really unique about capillary, uh, apart from today we have a lot of uh, partners who are very focused on digital capturing data online. Uh, capillary is one of the company that we have worked with probably more than 100 different systems, including point of sale systems that we can do a real time integration with the point of sales. So imagine that you are actually transacting in a retail store, uh, doing a direct integration with the boss, that we can trigger immediate action. Uh, the system can be updated, offers to be sent, and even in a way that it could be personalized. So that's one of the USB of capillary. Now, so loyalty is definitely a key opportunity for CMO to unlock even the low maturity of today uh, through other dimensions. Now with the loyalty program, there are many levels, there are many tools that we can make use of to improve your top line. So some of these examples is if you already start a base loyalty program, we typically see there's a one to two percent of improvement in your top line. So LDS means it's a loyalty driven sales. So through a loyalty driven sales, you're actually improving one to two percent. Of course, there are many other levels that we can pull, like it could be having a personalized loyalty, a tier loyalty program, a social loyalty, digital loyalty, dynamic loyalty, and partner loyalty. So these are some of the different levers that we pull uh, when we work together with our clients to tell them that what do you actually need at this point of time. We also provide some kind of consultancy services uh, based on the different industries that they are in, you know, the average basket size, average frequency industry. So these are the different levels. And we can see if you are combining most of these things together, uh, there is an improvement about 15 to 20 percent uplift in your top line. Most important, when you think of a loyalty program, uh, you must also think of how do you interact with your consumer. Does your consumer actually comes back to your brand to make redemption? So when you are giving out a point, or when you are giving out a voucher, or when you are doing any kind of activities, is your members or is your customers interacting with the brand? One of the very common findings that we find is as long as the consumer or the customers is interacting with the bank, they tend to spend a lot more, maybe 2x, 3x or even more. What are the different types of loyalty programs in the market today? 
uh, like very straightforward. You can see some brands are doing a straightforward discount. So typically, these are very price conscious uh, consumer. Uh, the average ticket could be low, so people are looking for direct discount upfront. Then there's always a point system. You know, point system is very commonly practiced in the oil and gas industry. You know, with the point system, you go back to the same uh, brand of petrol kiosks to keep refilling of same supermarket. So we took a cashback partnership collation program and a card program. So these are some of the programs which Capillary runs on our platform. And it's not only limited to as a single company, uh, you're just running one single program. So within a single company itself, you can run a mixture of all this program in combination. Now, next, uh, next part of the presentation, I'll move into more of the use case studies. So uh, this, this is a brand, uh, it's Tata. Anyone have heard of Tata or anyone has not heard of Tata? Uh, so Tata is probably one of the largest uh, loyalty programs that is run on Capillary's platform today. Uh, why do we say so? Because uh, Tata is a program that consists of more than 30 brands. We have hospitality, uh, like the Taj Mahal Hotel. We have airlines. Uh, we also have things like Starbucks running on the same platform. This program is very unique in the sense that each individual brand itself, they can run their own loyalty program. But at the at the end, they all flows to the top, which is they call it the new pass. So new pass is the group body program. So each program, whether you are in the hospitality industry, you are in the food and beverages, you are in the um, jewelry business itself, you can run it separately. So Tata kind of consolidate and give a five percent across the board. So imagine when they are doing this, what is the core objective, you know, of running this? First is they are doing a lot of data collection. So they try to engage the consumer. They try to also move consumers through a lot of cross-sell, upsell to different brands. So you know they make you kind of stays within uh, the group of companies that they own. So this is a very good way for uh, you know Tata to really engage the consumer. What we are really proud of this program is within a period of five months after launching this program. Uh, we have onboarded about 100 million consumers on the platform and there are millions of transactions running on the platform on a daily basis. You could see uh, how Tata does it is the apps itself have various categories. So, you know, you can never get bored of, you know, there's nothing to look forward to. They consolidate all the different loyalty programs in a single app itself. So I might be a member of a Taj Mahal, I might be an Air Asia member, I might be a Starbucks. So if I open up this app, it can tell me which are all the loyalty programs, how much points I have within the Tata app itself. So I don't need to have a separate app for each and everybody. So they talk to you more about the education of payments, what is your current point balance, and lastly, what kind of items that you can redeem as a consumer. So what is relevant for you? What do you care about? How much points do your account have? And you know what's available for redemption? So the next thing I uh, wanted to talk about uh, is how the FMCG companies, uh, this is a bot, uh, how the FMCG is actually going down to the consumer and start data collection. I think it's very difficult and very tough to start collecting if you're, I'm just buying from the supermarket. So a bot will never know who the consumer is. So by doing this, actually, Airbot is introducing uh, PWA. It's not even a mobile application. It's just any of the phone browser. Uh, when I make a purchase, I could just simply scan a QR code that is found either hidden inside the team. So when you actually open up a mail portal, uh, you can scan it, and then you can start accumulating points. The way they make it more interesting is they also are able to do some kind of gamification and surprises. So by doing this, what Airbot is uh, collecting is they're able to collect the consumer information. They're able to even tell what kind of products that you are buying, how much you are buying, when should I talk to you when your product's running out. So for example, if I know you bought five cans, six cans, we can design a journey when is the best time to engage you, you know, in the communication. So that's on Airbot. 
The third one is a program on Unilever. So we would always think that by doing a B2B business, like a business to business, it's very hard to run a loyalty program. So uh, what do you want to reward your business partner with? So just like any of the consumer, business also likes to get motivated. They also like to be inspired. They also like to play certain kind of games. They also want to be uh, doing some gamification. So that's the, something that we did for Airport itself. This is an example. We started off uh, in Vietnam as the first market. So Jotun is a paid company. So uh, when we take this program, it's an influential loyalty program. We always think that a loyalty program could potentially be a consumer, like you, yourself, like me. Uh, but what Airport came up with a very brilliant idea we implemented for them is we actually influence the painter. So most of us today here uh, will probably not really care about which brand of the paint that you actually buy. But you'll be more care if you're actually renovating your house or renovating your office. Uh, you'll be more thinking about which color that I'm choosing. So the way that we kind of motivate the painters is we run the body programs for painters. So the painters becomes the influencer uh, for the airport program. So we reward the painters whenever they, 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 they buy, they scan a receipt, and then the points get automatically added to the account. So I think lastly, this is my last case study. Uh, and this case study is about Domino's Pizza. Uh, it's a very brilliant program that we run in Indonesia, which also got us a lot of uh, awards. When one of the largest pizza brands in the world decided to take over their delivery game, they decided to choose right. Domino's, an incredibly successful pizza company across 85 countries, had an unusual problem in Indonesia. Domino's, a pioneer in its deliver to home space, wanted to increase online order and decrease single frequency users. To increase healthy revenue stream, increase order value while creating value for the customer. Clearly, it knew one thing. It was not top of mind when it came to existing customers and to new customers. They needed to engage with the customer accurately and win them over, to build a relationship with them, as they have done in most other markets across the world. Enter Capillary, a single point solution to Domino's Indonesia's brand engagement and customer traction problems. Capillary employed its solutions in three specific areas, using Capillary Insights Plus for analytics and customer data platform. Capillary Engage Plus to take the understanding from the customer data to create continuous and relevant engagement using an omni-channel engagement solution. Creating a marketing automation engine for Domino's to understand its customer base and engage with it accurately. And capillary AI propensity-based models employed to increase purchase propensity. Putting Domino's right back to what it was doing best. Creating customer delight. Creating its own domino effect to delivering pizzas and winning hearts one heart at a time. Well, to look at a snapshot of what went on in the background. Exercise finally saw a creation of over 170 different digital omni-channel customer touch points based on a number of parameters. For example, starting with recency of purchase, visit count, and active period of engagement to nudge the customer towards purchase. Creating an impact of three times increase of life cycle campaigns, 10 times ROI with Facebook campaigns, a four times increase in ROI with product personalization campaigns, a 3% decline in the one-time customer base, an 8% increase in the active customer base, bringing the exercise to its meaningful win, helping Domino's create its own domino effect with sales, better customer engagement, and a huge win on building its customer relationship. And to retain their much-loved slogan, Domino's, the pizza delivery experts. Thanks for giving your time. Uh, this is what we have earlier touched about the report uh, from BCG. So if you are a CMO, CIO, or business owner, you want to improve your top line of your company through a loyalty program, 
please scan to download a free copy of the BCG report. It's a huge report, but it's definitely worth your time you know, to read through this report. Last but not least, this is me, I'm Sean, from Capillary. Uh, so if anyone wants to get in touch with me, please scan uh, the QR code. It should open up my name card and you can just save it and do drop me a text or an email or connect me on LinkedIn. So more than happy to discuss uh, you know, anything of quality. Thank you for your time.